please let the people know your name and what is your purpose here today. Sure. Hello. My name's Icicli. I'm the Season 3 Rec League Champion and in-game leader for Team Airdrake. So what do you think it takes to win the Rec League Championship? So, to succeed here on this stage, it doesn't really take one individual. It takes a team. Together, you must bond, communicate, trust, but most importantly, fight. Tooth and nail. For every creep, dragon, and tower. Together. But if even one of those pieces fail, if one person gets under someone's skin, if one person doesn't know how to communicate, or one leader doesn't make the right call, no one will trust each other, and you will not win. Not in this league. Oh, you're gonna lose yourself tonight. They have it. This is too late. Pickle Popper going in. The equalizer falling down. The damage is unbelievable. Lux laser just obliterates them. Damage is coming out, and it's all this flashing. And this is gonna be a huge one. Oh! Fourth of July in February, baby. Fireworks.
teams. Um, not really dropping, I think, maybe one lane against Bramble, I'd say they lost, maybe. I, But, like, maybe, maybe. Um, they are very good players. Uh, it, yeah, and that's the thing. It's it, it's super solid, but Tucker has, as you've seen, his stats are also no joke. So I think this is the first time Infernal might have an incredibly hard bottom lane for them to deal with. But we're gonna have to see how MK Heat deals because I believe he was playing in the uh, the top lane the past few times. Yeah, is he back now? Is he a normal support man? I actually don't know the yeah, history he behind usually, the man. He has been playing support for them um, this season. But I think right. the one thing that uh, Robian and Bash do really well is just negate any kind of lane pressure that the enemy team might have. They, they're really good at just playing defensive and farming and hitting 200 farm with two items and then going off and just absolutely destroying, you know? Exactly. That's like their strength. So that's what I expect them to do again. And speaking of strengths, we're seeing some of them being taken away from each of the teams. Look like we got the Kaisa, Rek'Sai, and Cho'Gath bands going away, taken away from Rovian, uh, Sable, and Mr. Neat all accordingly doing their homework, trying to beat Infernal by taking away some of the most powerful pieces, at least support pieces as we talked about. Nothing aimed at Shu thus far. Yeah, we do uh, see the Vladimir store, although there goes, gets locked in. I don't know who that's going to. Probably to Mouse Mazing, I would imagine. Very possible. I know Vladimir has been able to do some work in the top lane lately as well, but we're, I don't know if Hey Dude 5 feels up to the challenge of playing that wrist and hand crippling champion. Because <laughs> when you play Vladimir, yeah, uh, yeah, you have the claw going on. I haven't Whew. really been uh, keeping up with these players' match history, so I'm doing a little research in that right now, and I imagine, I think it is going to be a mid lane, Vladimir. That's, I would my, imagine. that's my current expectation. I would imagine so, but we got the Urgot going, what I imagine would be on the top side for Mr. Neat. Nautilus, I think Nautilus is often the bot lane as we see right now, right? Vash plays a lot of that shenanigans. Really good bot lane CC heavy, making Rovian looking so good. The play is going down. I love to see it. The Hecarim, though, coming in, I'm assuming for hot soup in the jungle. Tell me a little bit about why you think the pony is the best jungler right now. Um, putting words in your mouth. I was okay. I was gonna say, I actually don't think Hecarim is a <laughs> I'm not even sure that Hecarim is a good jungler right now without this Tarek pick. So, Tarek Hecarim is actually ridiculous. You can just dive the back line not take any damage, have 40 plus armor, heals forever, stuns. I It's 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 this one enchanter support that just does a really good job of keeping the pony alive from a very long distance. And I think this is still very timely because we know that Hecarim is getting a little bit of a hit in the next patch there, removing some of the power from his E that speed up after rank one. Rank one's gonna stay the same, rank two through five will be reduced slightly, so he's not gonna have quite the burst that he has had in the past. But we got the Cassidy pickup for the shoe in the mid lane. We've seen him go bananas on this champion before. And do you think we're gonna see it go again, potentially versus this Vlad? Yeah, so I, I yes. yes. <laughs> it's against this Vlad, definitely. I think he's gonna do a really good job of farming up. Um, the the one thing that Vlad has going for him is that he always, you know, Vlad scales ridiculously into the late game. And if you can yeah. get a good Vlad ult E combo, you can kind of like one shot a whole team. Mm -hmm. um, but Cassidy is very similar to that too, where casting also hits, gets that level 16 mark with a couple items, three or four items, really can actually just one shot anyone um, pretty, pretty reasonably. So I think uh, it's a good pick because it scales hard. So it, it means you can not, you won't necessarily just like auto lose late mm -hmm. uh, if you don't end early, which Infernal typically ends their games pretty early. That is true. And uh, so they do have that insurance, and we have seen Shu on that level 16 casting in, and that super broken Man, ability that he has. Goodness. This is the second team I've seen to force Rovian to sustain three bands and not bend out the Caitlyn. I would be remiss if he doesn't pick Caitlyn, or maybe Tristana, but all right, Jinx, that's fair. So Jinx is good too. Super late game uh, comp right now here. It's also um, a it super annoying lane with Nautilus, man. Whew. Yeah, no, I'm sure that's a lot of CC. Uh, well, you get, the yeah. one thing to note is they did take out the Sona, so they aren't going to get that second half of the um, Sona Taric combo. Right, so the lane's going to be slightly nerfed a little bit. Not going to see that OP ness <laughs> that uh, always, exists in the bot lane. Hey, dude, five takes his Maokai. Oh, yeah, as as expected, right? As expected. This tradition. Yeah, this is now, good. Is it a Mr. Neat and Ergot? No. Oh, it is? 
It's got to be right, Mister Neat Urgot. It's got to be the got to be the play. I haven't seen him play this character before, so oh, he has in his match history. Yeah, that's probably what this is. All right, good. I'm glad to see that because Urgot is a fun champion to play and watch. I love watching that 220 range, ultimate fire off from halfway down the river. Feels so good to see that if it hits. Yeah, man. I cool. Good for him. I mean, it's definitely a branch out from the uh, uh, typical tank tank only player that we've seen so far. So, um, and it's going to be really good in the Maokai. I imagine that's going to be a pretty free lane for him. So, yeah, I can't can't say enough about that one too. As Urgot does so well versus a lot of these kind of passive, more tanky champions, it's going to be great to see. Uh, I'm not so I'm not sure what to expect from this Hecarim versus Kane jungle. We know that Zabel's Kane is quite impressive. He likes to come from all sorts of angles, makes the ganks happen, invades your jungle, and does it all while keeping his smite up. Strangely enough, if you watch, it's pretty great. What do you think we're going to see from this Hecarim now that he has the Terek on his team? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I this is like the Tarek is always the piece to me that completes the Hecarim, but you still have to have the coordination to go for it. You have to be able to like have the Hecarim run in with the Tarek W on him, get the ult started, and then dive the backlog. So you don't have to have the invulnerability going right when you get there. Mm -hmm. You kind of just want it to. Uh, you want to be invulnerable basically when the fear from your, the Hecarim ult ends, and then you can just run people, run them over, run them through. You know, run them down, run them down like a dirty dog. It's going to be really, really nice. You also have to make sure that you're getting the ultimate on to Zaya because if uh, if a Kasten or this Kane or Jinx, they have so Inferno has so many threat options that the inv invulnerability needs to go down in multiple places. I can't just be, I can't just be on the Hecarim. Mm -hmm. I also realize real quick for those of you in chat, I did have the uh, teams reversed. Sentinels is on the blue side, Infernal is on the red. Just FYI, uh, did have it reversed on the right. the things on the screen, but that's okay because this is going to be such good gameplay. You're going to forget all about that <laughs> as you watch this bot lane. The Zaya Tarek, I think, is going to be something that is probably going to end up being fine versus Jinx Nautilus. Tarek being a little bit more more of a tank boy, so he's not going to get absolutely destroyed by Nautilus as as I've been experienced with in the past, getting slowed, getting trapped, all sorts of stuff. Going to have some sustain there. I'm excited to watch that lane though. Again, just putting Rovian on something a little different, right? Having to take those three bands away from him, I think is really, really saying to how much they respect him in the bot lane. Great stuff. Yeah, but Jinx is still a, um, so it's similar to both Vayne and Kaisa where like your goal is to just kind of not do anything until you can get two items and then just become a monster, right? right. So their goal doesn't change. Like despite it being a new pick for him in the rec league anyway, uh, it, the, the goal of the lane and of their play doesn't change. They're still just uh, going to try to negate losing at the lane. They're just going to farm and uh, come out very strong because Jinx is a ridiculous character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come out very strong, indeed. So, yeah, other than that, it's just going to look like we are now just 45 seconds of getting into game number one of the semifinals. Going to see if Infernal can be dealt their first loss of the entire season. Or if Sentinels are going to have to lick their wounds and come back at it to see how they can defeat the Goliaths of the tournament thus far. Yeah, actually, I mean, both these team comps are really good, right? Um, you got... They're almost similar, too. You both have, like, this hyperscale mid lane. You got this really strong Conqueror character in Hecarim and Urgot. Mm -hmm. Like, the Kane is obviously going to do a bit more than the Maokai. I think the Maokai is, like... Like, we saw Bramble pick it last game, too, and I wasn't thrilled, but... Um, it, I don't know, it just, I'm not really sure what the champion is supposed to do right now in the meta. I don't, I just don't know. So I guess, I guess that's on them <laughs> to prove that it matters. To prove <clears throat> that that character is a fitting place in this team composition, I think. I think they can make it work. It's, it's going to be fun to watch if nothing else. When you get a lot of blood, a lot of these, these high impact plays, it's just so fun to just see them go back and forth and. Who gets to die and what KDAs you can smash and whose dreams you can wreck. It's just where it's, it's what I'm all about, you know, just what can we see here? Yeah, dream wrecking. That's, dream that's our job. wrecking. <laughs> it's called the Wreck League, not for nothing, my man. Not for nothing. So we're getting into the game. We got my favorite part of the game, seeing all of the skins. I'm so pleased with everyone except for Mr. Neat buying skins, supporting Riot Games in this 
tournament, but we got the Urgot rocking the default skin, so already Infernal at a huge disadvantage coming into this game. <laughs> yep. Such a, such a disadvantage. Huge. Yeah, it's already over. Yeah. Game's over. 16 and 0, um, nothing. That doesn't five, mean anything. Five skins versus four skins, that's all she wrote, you know? That's it. Pack it up. Just They should come in FF10. Just don't even just remake, you know, just give it up. <laughs> All right, uh, I have to go AFK for two seconds. I'll be right back. No problem. Then I will sit here and talk a little bit about what I think is going to be one of the interesting parts about this game as well is that we have a lot of these non-combat summoners except from the bot lane, right? We got the double teleport action, which we got some plays. We got the double teleport action in the top lane, so no one's trying to go for kills there. No one's trying to go for kills in the mid lane. And we got this double Taric Nautilus bot lane ignite festival. With the uh, rever with the reverse flash and heal going on both sides, I love seeing that too. Are you a flash on F or are you a flash on uh, uh, D person? Definitely yeah. flashes for F. So flashes for what F it stands for. That's <laughs> like yep, that's what it stands for. It's got to make sure because you know that's a big deal. That's a, it's been a debate since the beginning of time almost. The There's beginning a lot of this of game. Not flash on F in this game, damn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well then, well, I seem to be outnumbered. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's it's interesting to see who likes to play which way. I actually, man, it's been so long. I don't even know what I, my flash is anymore. Yeah. I'm just dumpster like barely like, gold player. His flash might be a dash, but it's not D for dash. It's after <laughs> flash, you know. <laughs> Hell to the yeah. So here we go. We got game number one of this semifinal series coming into play right now. We got a little bit of the top lane Infernal squad. Don't know if they were Show caught me what up you there. Got Infernal. Sitting, What's, this What's the plan? They're just sitting in the brush. Here comes the Nautilus. Hatsu 5 notices it. Do n does not throw out the hook. Hmm. Has not skilled up an ability yet either. So I'm not sure what they're expecting with that one. Okay. So be it. So be it. So the team just walking in, getting some vision, going back to lane and spreading themselves back out. As we see on the other side, Tucker and MK Heat getting the same vision. Walks over a ward so they know that the vision is there. It looks like we're going to see a delayed back here. So Sable and Mr. Neat looking to steal blue buff. Seems like uh, Vladimir might be onto it, but might not be sniffing it out quite enough. Yeah, I think they were looking for any, if any more invades were going to happen, but did not get the ward onto the blue. So it looks like Sable's going to come in and quick grab this blue buff for yeah. Infernal. If Hot Soup is aware, though, he should be able to vertical jungle this and get in and take that second buff so he doesn't get set super far behind. And yeah, Hot Soup grabs, grabs the red. Immediately is going to go down to start his two, uh, not Gromp, the other ones, uh, Golems. Yeah, so Sable we got grabbing it up, going immediately to his red, gonna get the two buff, potentially even the three buff start if he gets it uh, correctly, but they should know something weird is going on because Blue has noticed that Sable is not at his blue buff yet. So we'll have to see what's going on here, but we got a little bit of action going on from Shu on the top side. Krugs, thank you. Of course. It's been a while. Had a little bit to drink today too, so my memory is not going like it should be. <laughs> Got a dark and stormy ready for this one. Delicious. So we got a little bit of action in the bot lane here. Get some good poke from Rovian and Vosh in the bottom. Looking yeah, nice. I'm just gonna farm up. I mean, I think I think this is definitely gonna be one of those games where not a whole ton is gonna happen, at least until everyone's six. That'd make a lot I mean, of that's, sense. That's been the infernal story anyway. It's just like don't bleed and then just destroy them in the first team fight. That's like pretty much their story. And it has worked very well for them so far. And I can see it continuing to work so with the team comp they've crafted for themselves. I guess with the one difference being that Cassidy is not going to be the most useful person until 6. But can still make it happen given the right circumstances. Although we got some action going to the bot side. Hot Soup 5 going in for a little bit of the ganks here. Vosh is finding himself with the flash. Does have to flash out of there. Rovian and Vosh still live. But not without taking some damage. Okay, first uh, first swing coming out of Sentinels. Hot Soup visiting the bot side, trying to say, Rovin and Avash, you're going to have to back up. You are uh, playing a little bit too far up. But then again, also on the top side of the map, we also got Sable coming in for Mr. Neat blowing Hadoo 5's flash. Right on up. 
good start to the game. I like both junglers taking a little bit of an advanced approach, trying to get trying to get in there early, trying to show them who's boss, so to speak. But yeah, really excellent stuff coming out of both junglers, man. Getting those flashes out of the way. Both flashes right, on the bot side. So I can't I can't remember how this works. Can you uh can Cassidy does ooh, whoa. My mouse just freaked out. Um does Cassidy Q stop Vlad from channeling his E? I think it does. Uh it would, yes. It would stop him from fully channeling it. Uh, it is a silence interrupt. So we'll have to see. I could pay attention to that for a moment, see what he ends up doing here. Although we, I don't think we've seen that interaction just yet. I, I've been looking a little bit. I think I think uh, Mouse Amazing is doing a good job of actually either casting the E or when it does get interrupted, it just blows up for what it's worth. It doesn't like gotcha. cancel. Can't I like quite that. tell which way that is. Rovin doing a good job of getting some poke here on the bot side. Tucker trying to trade back and forth, but we got Hot Soup 5 once again making his presence known. Walks over a ward. And Rovi and Vash just two step backwards, and they are good to go. I mean, Mr. Neat's looking really good up here on the Surgot. It's looking, uh... Looking pretty neat, is what you're trying to yeah, say? He's looking no, clean? Absolutely, yeah. He's looking uh, like a very, very... Oh, excuse me. Looks like you know what he's doing on the champ, uh, despite us not seeing it all season. So, good, good research, good homework, and good preparation coming into this from him. Yeah, it's going to make himself look... Pretty excellent coming out here. We got some poke going from Shu. He is falling a little bit low on mana right now, which is always the hard part when you're playing against a Vlad, having to get yeah. worn down. He's got he's got a 13 farm lead on a melee matchup. So despite the uh, despite the mana bar, he can base by that lost chapter um, and TP back. Similar strategy to what uh, Quaz did in the previous semifinals, semifinal. And very good at this point in time, like you said. Getting that melee matchup against Vlad, doing super well for himself. That's going to build a little bit, uh, a little bit poorly for Sentinels coming into that mid and, and late game, especially as Cassidy just kind of gets to have his way with things. What do you think we need to see from Sentinels in order to kind of counter this this situation that they find themselves in? Yeah, I think it just kind of comes down to like, I think Mouse Amazing needs to just focus a little bit more on. This, like instead of get, getting the auto attack poke and stuff, just like actually dishing out the damn hit, hitting like get sorry, whoa, wow, I said the exact wrong thing I meant to say. Uh, actually, like hitting the minions and like making sure he secures these because um, also Kasten did not pick up the last chapter. He did not, but he did end up picking up a blasting wand. So as you can see, those Qs are doing so much damage to Vlad. He's we'll be able to heal that up, but. That is not uh, minor. Those Null Spheres are really doing work. Yeah. Um, but the longer Vlad stays here, and if he can get trades off, he does have TP, so he does have like a free base, essentially, before before too much else happens. Uh, unfortunately, though, he is just having a hard time with the CS, comparatively. I'm not sure if Shoes, Null Sphere is taking control, taking control of his... Uh, his tides of blood is really causing him an issue at farming, but it's just just watching him miss a few minutes here left and right. It's starting to get uh, starting to get painful to see, because you can see that uh, that lead has been stretched to a uh, little bit over twenty three, and that's not a good sign. So who we got on the bot side? Uh, moving back up, we got Tucker noting that being cautious to walk past this mid lane portion, just looking to get some experience if possible. Not trying to get poked down or under threat from the Nautilus hook. I'd like right. to see some of so, that. I mean, you can see this. Like, no towers have even been touched, right? No plates fallen, obviously. But, like, no towers have even been touched. And Sentinels are down I, I, 10, 20, I don't know, 30, 30 1300, CS, 40 man. 40 CS already? 40 yeah. CS already. 1300 like, gold. Yeah, they're not... If this keeps up like this, I mean, this is the way Infernal beats you. They just perfect farm as hard as they can. This is this is their strat, man, and it's uh, worked. And it's and it, looking like it's going to continue to work here. Yeah, the the one of the big problems here is we see Mouse Mazing again forced to not even be able to use the Crimson Pack to get that empowered Q off. He's just taking so much poke, missing the CS, getting some CS, but missing some of it that he's going to need in order to stay into this. And right now. Being poked out of lane with Cassin in there, preventing his back, means they get a free Infernal Drake for themselves. Might be contested, but I don't foresee... Uh, That's amazing can TP in. 
We'll have to see if this ends up going in this direction. But it's just not, the timing wasn't quite right. She exactly. did a nice job on delaying that base. Del delaying that Vladimir base, so he actually wasn't able to get back, get healthy, buy, and TP into the pit. Which is, like you said, just the way they happen. Perfect farm, get themselves up in CS and grab some objectives for free. No and fight needed. Mouse Amazing is choosing to walk back instead of TPing. I, he's not losing a whole ton right now, but what he what he is doing by doing this is enabling Shu to just get a really free base off here. Oh, Shu's going for the Roa true. Okay, good point. Not the... Um, that's why he didn't get the lost chapter, because he wanted the Roa. Which is a very, very good choice on Kasten that I had kind of forgot about. Yeah, it's going to give him so much survivability in this yeah. in this long term. It's going to give him that. Oh, he's going in on this too. A lot of damage. As you can see, look at that damage. just comes out, comes in chunks. About a, a little bit of a yeah. fifth of the damage. Maybe a quarter of the health just in one rotation. It's just going to get worse from there too is the problem. Without getting any uh, magic resistance from the side of the Vlad, he's just going to be taking that damage. Not sure if he can afford it with his build order, but we see a little bit of action on the top side. Hey Dude 5 getting flipped over by Mr. Neat. Has to blow the ultimate. As you can see, <laughs> Mr. Neat almost walks away from the ultimate in time. Tarek is an ulting for some reason in the bot lane. We got Vosh falling, but that was just slightly oh. too late, Mr. Uh, MK. He, now he is invulnerable. Yeah. Rovian going to have to walk away from this one, but nothing's going to come from that. Like you MK said. Heat could have just made... Giving them a double kill if you just uh, played that correctly and ulted uh, immediately. That was like very close. Um, but he just he just saved his ult for a very long time. He yes. wasn't like aware of what his AD carry AD carry's health bar was. It would seem. Ooh, so true. We got Hey Dude Five getting ganked on the top side. Zabel showing up with Mister Knee trying to make it d uh, happen. He did put him in range of the tower for a single tower shot, but was not able to combo his root up to try to p keep him under that tower. I think he was just too busy um, uh, staying alive. Yeah, I I do gotta say that uh, Hey Dude Five in this Maokai is doing a good job of pulling this jungle pressure up um, up to the top lane. Yeah, yeah, up into the top lane, just kind of like negating a lot of that. But now with this, uh, so with this, um, let's see, what turns does he have? It's... Yeah, so uh, Shu opted to run the uh, Taste of Blood. So he's able to heal up a good chunk of health every 20 seconds or so. And that's about like the same amount of time that uh, Vladimir is able to get those three Q stacks. So that's basically why sh that combined with the uh, magic resist shield uh, on the casting queue is kind of why this matchup is working out really well for him. And he is just consistently just giving it to him nonstop. Right. And you see it there how he, he uh, shoot ours in and immediately throws that Q and the channel for mouse amazing is interrupted so it is starting to become a difficult time for things in the mid lane here as we can see Shu sitting at 115 cs at just 12 minutes that is almost perfect so than that he's looking mighty good and on Cassidy, perfect farm <laughs> right and not not only that but like okay sure that's 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 near perfect right but their ad carry this is what i'm saying their AD carry also has a very similar number to that, and with an extra wave to pick up right now. So, I I can't stress enough how good Robin has been at just like perfect farming. He's freezing this lane out right now, or trying to to try to deny some more CS. It's not going to totally work, but but it'll work better it, than not at all, which is right. Yes, it's it's that like. It's that attitude of like every single CS matters, that's Ooh. gonna work out really well. But now we got some teleports coming on the bot lane here. Robian having to flash, putting himself out of it. We got Zabel coming on the top side, looking to alt in. Knock up going on to the first blood going for Cassidy and picking up the Taric. But Robian's being tracked down by everyone turning onto him right now. The tides are turning as Vosh falls very low. And also Robian, the shoe trying to get out of there as well. Robian does fall. It is a one for two though. First blood going over to shoe. Hey dude five lands the route onto shoe. See if he can get out of there. Sable is backing him up. They are able to retreat. And it is a two for one in favor of Sentinels. And that fight actually could have it was five seconds, I believe, until the Terracol was up. And if they that fight had taken oh, Mr. Five D. seconds later. Ooh, ooh, gets run over by the pony right in the range of the tower. Thumbs up from Hatsu 5. Puts him in the grave with those flashes, uh, throwing so, up the, right the, at, 
the right pictures there. Freezing Inferno for perfect farming and like coming out really strong. Uh, they took a team fight that didn't quite work out in their advantage. It did. It did put a kill on Shu though, and that can be a scary thing. In his first blood as well, uh, definitely something that you want to see on the cast. And he was able to get away without giving up. That. Uh, yeah, but it looks like they stuck around for too long and weren't able to like help or try try to prevent this Drake from going down. So this should just be a free Drake. Yeah, they're gonna give it up. They they stuck around for too long on the map. They tried to get like damage on the bot lane. They got a couple plates. Um, but for it, they lost the dragon, so I'm not sure that's worth. Especially not the ocean dragon. Now, the ocean dragon is something that is just notorious this season for crushing your laning phase and all your hopes and dreams. Because right yeah. now, Shu grabbing that in the laning phase means he doesn't even need blue buff anymore in order to be effective. Yeah, especially with the tier and the Roa. Uh, he, his mana pool is going to stay real healthy for a very long time. Exactly. Same with Rovian. If you want to talk about perfect farm already, have, not having to worry about using any of his mana for those rockets, it's just going to be so nice. So getting that free out of combat, not hit by champion, health, passive health and mana regeneration is disgusting start for Infernal. It is not quite. It started as 15 minutes in. However, we do cannot count on Sentinels. They are up. Two, uh, technically two kills, being 3-1, to one, and only down by 1,200 CS. The, the lead has not grown since uh, about 10 minutes into the game, so that's looking... Right. You've got to give him something. Yeah. So despite getting two, going go, going three for one and getting some plates, they're still at the same gold depths of, that they were. So this isn't this doesn't actually look that much better, although maybe mentally it does, right? Like mentally yeah. they have, have the kills on the board, so they're going to play a certain one. Exactly. And we also have a kill onto the mid laner as far as Mouse Mazing picking up a kill in the previous fight as well. So he's got to put a little bit more money in his pocket. He is still down by 1300 gold to Shu, but you definitely want to get Vladimir rolling somehow. Even if it's not through the laning phase, even if it's over time, Mouse Mazing is getting to where he needs to be in order to be the late game carry for his team. Yeah, he also is starting to. He's got. Ooh, this is not good in the bot line. Okay, it was good. But we got some top lane go down right now, too. Now. <laughs> yeah, to say Hot Soup is going in on Mr. Neat. Mr. Neat finding himself in a tough position. Going to fall down to the pony gank. Put him in the stables. Put him in the dirt at the same time. Hot Soup in Hey Dude yeah, 5. So when I say that this matchup for Urgot is good, well, first off, he's up a good chunk of Siesta. So that it is pretty good. But well, the reason it's good is that your first item spike is so much better than the Ooh, first item okay, spike. Okay, he... Oh, boom! Rovian takes down MK Heat with the Super Mega Death Rocket. Just tried to step up and try to stun him under the turret, but they just played that so perfectly on the side of Infernal Drake. And on the other side of the map, uh, Hot Soup got collapsed on by Sable and Shu uh, before, before Mouse Mazing could react. And Hey Dude 5 is falling on the top side right now. Reacts. Sable just tracked him down like a dog, yep. put him in the dirt, chopped him down utilize, on that tree. Utilize that red buff real well to just like catch so stay up with him uh in addition to you know red kane's ridiculous q um but yeah he he that was that was really well played we also just missed a ridiculous double trade in the bot side both rovian and tucker traded their lives as you can see in the wake of this tower destruction or the uh, all over the place right at now. the same time it's hard to track all of them at once but we do see the scuttle crab or i'm sorry the uh rift herald going the way of sable was Assuming they were fighting the Scuttle from where they were in the river, but that's not the case. Rift Herald going over to Infernal right now. Uncontested, no vision over there. So they're just going to grab that and potentially take that. I would imagine topside right now as Urgot has a huge lead. Could really use that to push down that tower. Could take it mid and just push Mouse Mazing out of that mid lane. Yeah, look at straight top. You might be able to get two towers if you go mid, but especially, especially if you get the gank off and then go mid. Agreed, but like we thought here, it is going to go topside top. as we see Urgot is there. Sable is there, going to be pushing it into, going to get some... Some damage off, no plates to be had anymore as they have dropped off, but they are going to grab this turret. First turret going over to the side of Infernal Drake. Okay, well their team is starting to do what they do almost best, which is grabbing all of those objectives and pushing everything forward at an accelerated pace. What we have to see here. We also do have the Rudin's Hurricane finished by the Jinx, which is going to start being really disgusting. We have Hey Dude 5, unfortunately being grabbed in by Fear Beyond Death. Getting taken down, Sable and Mr. Neat making it happen. Shelly's still alive, Turkey, taking the turret right now. Might fall to it, looks like one more hit. It's going to bring it to 5 health. And does die, Mouse Mazing though, coming in on the top side, looking to push them back. But we do have plays going on at the same time. 
Tarek Alt going down. We have two fights going on at once. MK Heat and Tucker getting the Tarek Ultimate saving their lives right now. But Mouse Amazing does track down Mr. Neat in the top side of the jungles. And then we have a fight after the turret. Turret takes him down. The trade kill going on the bot side. Vosh the Stampede. And also Tucker trading lives and Rovian pushing more on the bot side. But they got Shu in the middle fighting Mouse Amazing. Mouse Amazing is going to push him away. Might not be done here yet because Hot Soup 5 shows up. Shu backs off and kites him away with sheer confidence. As Rovian continues to push, taking these turrets down so quickly. This is the plays are non-stop all over the map. I was going to say, you should probably take a moment to try to breathe here. Woo! That was uh, quite some good summarization. Yeah, so I think what we just saw was the moment where uh, that other teams have not picked up on that Infernal are incredible at. Um, after they farm up these items, they just say, okay, you want to fight for Dragon? Sure, let's fight for Dragon. However that goes, win or lose, you know what's going to happen next? We're going to fight for freaking everything else on the map and take it all right there they just took two bot lane towers a mid lane tower two top lane towers birth herald and killed like three or four people that was like you they said just swung beautiful the game another 5k exactly so, <laughs> in in like three minutes that was absolutely insane so now we're looking at a 35k to a 29k deficit that's a 6,000 gold lead they definitely like you said almost tripled it in one go and also, I want to point out something real quick I thought was really slick. I'm not sure if you all picked it up at home, but Shu Rift walked onto the Blast Plant and knocked himself back over. Did not, didn't Rift walk over into the Dragon Pit. Rift walked to the Blast Plant, took the Blast Plant over to the Dragon Pit. <laughs> That's called style. That's when you know you're, you're feeling yourself when you're swagging that hard. So everything going the way of Infernal at the moment as Rovian picking up the red buff as Sable is clearing his jungle. They're about to do a coordinated team effort to grab some vision into the top side of the Sentinel's jungle right now. Looking to push a little bit further. They do have all but the mid lane tier 2 turrets down. So it's possible that they could be trying to threaten an inhibitor turret. As they do see them grouping on the top side with the Urgot as the sole member of Infernal in the bot side river. But Sentinels here looking to mount something up. They're, they don't quite have themselves all together. As we see Rovian and Vash still looking to push this top side. And then we have Mouse Mazing and Hot Soup looking to see if they can't do some defense in the mid lane here. But they are spreading them out nicely. And we're going to have to see if Sentinels can look to see if they can't find some picks or find some Infernal members in the wrong place at the wrong time. But other than that... Looking to see a little bit of parity here. We don't have Mr. Neat quite doing the uh, the full 1-3-1 going on, or the 2-1-1 with the jungler. Or 3-1-1 might be the case here, but Sable does go back looking to do some pickup here. He did finish his Black Cleaver and his Warrior Enchant. Looking mighty powerful right now. Shu's still doing a lot of damage. But at this point, it looks like there's a little bit of stability. Sentinel's looking to put a little bit of defense here. Yeah, the game definitely just slowed down in the last two minutes. Um... But that's kind of that's kind of one of the costs when you uh, when you get everything and you just go back to base and have this huge lead, but there's nothing else to fight for. Like fighting for an in hit tower right now is very difficult. So what? All right. So look at this. They're just going straight on, onto the Baron. They know like there isn't too much else they can do. So just going straight onto the Baron, pulling the Urgot TP already. This should be a very free Baron for them. Yeah. There's. I mean, there's there's almost nothing they can do. Shu is also here to pick off the people that are in the wrong positions. Like as you see here. He does not get caught. He is still, but he does get caught, actually. Hot 25 nails it with a perfect root on. Shu gets over the wall, but there's just too many, but he is getting out of there. This is absolutely disgusting. Tarek Ultimate coming down slightly too late for Hot Soup 5, but we see some damage coming out. Sable falling first, as we get the Fear Beyond Death for Mr. Neat, but hey, dude, 5 trying to get the return kills does not end up getting it. Rubian. Falls very low. Rubian. <laughs> He did so much damage off the back of that fight. He was in that corner shooting those rockets, just AoE everyone. Oh, gets on the like killing spree as well, pulling up the four, the two, and the five right now. They pick up the Baron, they pick up some kills. You gotta give Shu some credit. He survived for like 30 full seconds. Yeah, that was that was uh, some very quality and honestly kind of typical footwork of Shu to just like, just break go. everybody's ankles literally forced the or maybe not forced isn't the right word tucker used the uh zaya ultimate to try to root him up and uh, it didn't work out 
Um, and obviously he would have preferred to have had that Xyle ultimate and that choke point where it would have done a ton of damage. Oh, would have destroyed. So would not have only so did much. he live, but he also got at least that key ult. And that's the thing, this is not even a level 16 Kassadin yet. If he would have been 16, that might have been even more disgusting, having right, just yeah. even less time between those rift walks. But at this point in time, it's starting to look really bad. We have Shu sitting on the bot side. He's putting himself in that side lane. They do have that Baron buff on all of the minions, making them so much harder to kill, making that cannon just do work on the tower that Kassadin does not have to do himself. But as you see, Infernal moving into the mid tower. They're taking it down. They go in really hard. Sable gets the kill on MK Heat. There's not going to be a Taric ultimate for this fight. So we see them putting up the defense here. The shutdown going on to Rovian. Going in the backside. Fear Beyond Death picks up the kills. Gets the fear off onto Hatsu 5. He's not able to put out the extra damage. So then Sable gets the kill. That is a four for one. Really that... Yeah, oh, that, that was... That woo. was that was quite the thing. Good job, Rap Godding that one out for everyone. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no uh, doubt, Amazing did a really good job of getting on the background, actually utilizing, getting, getting his alt combo off onto uh, Mouse Amazing and taking him down. But it just wasn't enough, and he doesn't have the hourglass to like live. Exactly, um, exactly. He has the damage, but not the survivability. Right. Did, he was able to take out Rovian. But wasn't able to live afterward. Exactly. Rovian was a big kill to pick up, but you have to give credit on the end of that fight as well to Mr. Nee picking up those fears so that Hatsu, or Hat, was it Hatsu? Hey, dude. Uh, Hatsu, the one, the jungler, went in to do some extra damage, could not get the kills because he was too busy being feared and killed. Good stuff. Well, well team fought there, picking up the four kills for one. But, uh, uh Rovian's KDA, like Qua says, going in the dumpster after this one, picking up three deaths. <laughs> No more 13.0 for you, says Sentinels. If they can't take down the champions, at least they'll take down their pride. I bet it doesn't even drop a full one. I bet it goes to like 12.5 or something. I bet it's like <laughs> not that bad. Uh, over the maybe, maybe aggregate for this game itself. You can't wear the badge of best KDA. So at least minor victory is going on the side of Sentinels, but they're going to have to pull out some 24 karat magic. If we're going to see this right uh, here. Is Tarek looking like me out there having 25 minutes and not buying a sweeper yet? Oof. Big oof on that one. That's a no for me. It's a no for me. That's a no for me, dog. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, you know, gotta, gotta, get those, gotta get that sweeper out. Gotta get that vision game out. 25 vision score from your support is not good. It's not going to cut it. Yeah, definitely not enough. But as we see here, we have... We have two inhibitors down. They still somehow have to stop the Kassadin from just sieging down the yeah. top side. But here we go. Some of the team fights going I in. They get to flip onto MK Heat. Makes it down in time. The Terrick Ultimate does not land on him. Gets onto Tucker. But we have some damage coming out for Vasha Stampede. He's trying to get out of there. Super Mega Death Rocket pushing him back. But falling down. They're just too much. The Tide of Infernal is sweeping the nation. Wildfire the everywhere. Ace. Almost clean. Uh, There's one death. Uh, Vash. The dirty ace, the ace on the rocks. Ace on the rocks, put the olive juice in there as the five for one comes into play. Infernal taking game number one in a brutal fashion. 54 to 38. Icicle, bring us back to game number two. Tell us about her. Uh, uh. <laughs> that was uh, quite the thing. I, I Man, that, that was absolute domination by Infernal. Um, there was that one team fight that happened for Sentinels in the beginning of the end. That looked really clean, really good. Um, and then. I don't know if you want to call it getting caught, but they were just in the wrong positions at the wrong time, and Infernal punished uh, like five objectives in uh, just a very short, like three window, three minutes, maybe five objectives went down. I think it was, it was yeah. just too fast of a bleed. They accelerated the game very quickly, so other than that, we're just going to have to send it over to a short break, and we're going to come on back, let Sentinels think about their lives. Infernal can gloat for a minute, but they're going to have to show it for game number two. Do not go away.
Welcome back everyone to series number two, game number two of the semifinals of season four of the Rec League. Infernal came out the gate, walked right into Blue Sentinel's jungle and just burned the place to the ground. In game number one, it's looking scary, but Blue Sentinels, if the one thing they know how to do is they know how to watch what happened and come on back a little bit stronger than this time. Let me know, chat, what you thought of that game number one. Was that, in fact, like I had predicted, some of the best League of Legends in the history of League of Legends or any game of all time ever? Fortnite doesn't matter. League of Legends is better. This game is going to be so much better than even the previous game because they got to see what happened in the last one. So thank you again for joining. My name is Raddy Z. I am joined by the legend himself, Isaac Lee. Say hello to hey, the peoples. What's up, dudes? We're, uh, we're getting ready to go into this next game. Uh, I I think I gotta yeah I mean you always gotta root for the three games right so let's let's hear it for Sentinels let's see if we got any uh, Sentinels fans in the chat today Exclamation Point Sentinels or Exclamation Point Infernal if you just want the clean sweep exactly so what I'm super interested in is what a Sentinels got what are they holding in their bag of tricks in their their scroll of combat right are they reading from like Sun Tzu Art of War at this point in time? Are they like thinking about it? Are they really getting themselves into the, we got to battle back. We got to battle from the edge of defeat. We got to reverse sweep these fools. I want to know yeah. what they're thinking. And I want I them mean, to come I out said, hard. That's what I hope. I hope like, I have, look, look, look. What is, what, is, what is that thing I said the other day? Like character isn't defined by how you are when you win. It's it's what you do when you're down. Yeah, when it's you're not, down exactly. It's yeah. not, not yeah, when you're yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not when you're up 3-0 or whatever, but when you're down 0-2 or whatever, up 2-0. When you're down 0-2. Yeah. So they're down. They're down in the pits. They're down 1-0. Match point for them. What's uh, what's it going to be? You know, Are they just going to give up? Are they going to go hard? That's, that's what it's all about. Exactly. So here, on this final match, we're going to have to see exactly how they want to approach it. And I'll start off by saying the thing I want to see differently is a little bit, if possible... Again, it could have been the matchup, but the poss the matchup between Shu in the mid lane and Mouse Amazing. Mouse Amazing is an amazing player, has made some huge plays, has some great rotations and awareness. And at this point in time, it looked like he wasn't really comfortable stepping up into into Shu's realm of that mid lane. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I I, I would love, I'd rather see him go back to like the the Malzahar and the Morgana, the shove and roam with the hot soup, try to get like some picks in other locations. That's what I want to see. That might not be what they go for, and I wouldn't blame them either because when you bet on your player to win, you have to back them. You know, you got to yeah. keep going with them. So maybe that game didn't work out, but this one could. So I get it. We'll, we'll see how they choose to play it. Exactly. So what we're going to have to see at this point in time is I imagine we will not see too much differentiation in the draft. It does look pretty good both directions. Ezreal being taken away from Tucker as he's shown to be an absolute beast on that champion. Doesn't matter what lane he's in. He's going to crush on it. We got the uh, Hecarim being taken away from Hot Soup. That looked like it might have been a little bit too much of a problem this last game. Not wanting to give it to him again. I think that's a good choice. Hot Soup did look pretty devastating and was able to make a lot of plays. Uh, and do a lot of damage in some of those team fights more than you might anticipate. Yeah, it also... Um, it changes the field, right? So it... Like, without the without the Hecarim, you don't necessarily want to go for that Terror. Right. Uh... Right. And if Sable isn't comfortable taking up the Hecarim, I think that's a very smart ban. I like this ban a lot as well. Taking away the Nautilus is an awesome ban from Vash and Robian. He just he Vash has looked so incredibly comfortable on that champion in every single game he's had it. He does Yeah, that champion Yeah. That was, champion's also just super rigged right now. Yeah. So it's it's everything you want in a support, right? It's got survivability. It's got tremendous crowd control. It even has just enough damage to be le like deadly. Good stuff. To be relevant, right? Like exactly. It just, it just does enough damage. Let's see if they go for the Urgot jungle here. I suspect they do. I bet Hot Soup just goes straight Urgot here. Um, also taking that away from Mister Neat. Suteric. So oh. We see Urgot. Are we gonna see a Sona? Nah. -uh. I mean, it's open. Yeah, but they don't have the Hecarim. So unless Hot Soup's planning on picking like Olaf or something, I don't like this. Here we go, oh, Tarek Sona. So I okay, so if we're gonna have to see what jungler they're picking with it. I would have rather seen Tarek Urgot and then because here Urgot's gonna be taken, right? And Urgot is a good jungler with that. It's he's kinda like the third string, like Hecarim, Olaf, and then Urgot. 
mm-hmm. uh, with the Terek Sona. That's a really good combo. And there's no way Infernal would have picked Sona, so... So, but... I'm but definitely, My eyebrows are raised, too. Yeah, hold on. My eyebrows are raised on both sides because Mr. Neat is a tank player. All right, he plays tanks. What is he going to be playing Urgot right now? Or is Shu going to be playing Urgot right now? Where is this Urgot well, going? Because Rek'Sai is already picked. Yeah, he played Urgot last game. Oh, no. Uh, Mr. Neat so, played uh, Maokai, yeah? Or Maokai? No, 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 Urgot. Uh, hey, hey, dude played Maokai. Hey, dude played Maokai. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, check, check, yeah, check, yeah. check, check, check. So, like, going back to the top lane. Ooh, right, 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 right. These Dark and Storm is a little too strong. But Where we got the Jax pickup. Sick. Oh, it's probably Jungle Jax. I could see that Jungle Jax. Yeah, yep. that could work. Yep, yep. Jax jump, Tarek stuns. Pretty good stuff. All right, so we got... We're going to have to see what's going on here. We do have the Kai'Sa being picked up for Robin. As we've seen, he is super comfortable on that champion and looks kind of devastating. So I'm... Uh, uh, I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared to see him see some more Rovian action on the Kaisa. Like you said, that long term just but he just farms so goddamn well. Right. He just continuously just picks up all that I'm slamming my table. I'm so frustrated at how well he farms. Farms very well. And it on a champion that scales, it's it's pretty devastating, so. Gotcha. Um, another support actually maybe two support bins, arguably, but the Galio also hits you a little bit. Exactly. We've seen Shu do very well on the Galio before, like you've said in the past. Uh, Galio is very popular in the bot lane, but taking away both Braum, Galio, and Naut- Nautilus is going to mean there's not too many defensive supports left. At least Life common defensive supports. Especially ones that we've seen Vash play, so we're going to have to see what they go for this time. Yeah, N- and uh, taking away the Yasuo from Mouse Amazing, and then the Alawi from Hey Dude in the top lane. Some good some good bands right there. 100% yes. Alawi is such a fun champion to play. Maybe not the best in all the metas right now, but if you do not know how to play against her, she will ruin your night. Ruin it. Okay, that look. I think that's a top lane poppy. A toppy. So you got a toppy, a Jax jungle, Sona Tarek bot lane. She's going to, you know, blind pick the Corky, as is tradition. Oh. Maybe thinking about okay, it a little right. longer. Thinking about it. Right. Yeah, true. Picking Alistar for now, getting another 20 seconds to think about it. There we go. I like this. I like the Alistar pick up here. I think it's, it's generally a fine uh, yeah, fine Corky's choice for the Kai'Sa. Corky's a little sketchy in the Poppy. Oh, um, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, all right. That's a that's a pick that makes a lot more sense, I think. Maybe, <laughs> I mean, even Malzahar would have been really good here. But Victor, Victor works and Shu smashes, and it's a pretty... It's not like... There's no, like, good laners into Victor. Yeah, at least not in our league. It's definitely uh, definitely oppressive. We could see... Again, we could see some pretty pretty tasty stuff with things like... Um, what did I see? I was I was watching an eight, the games over in the L, LPL, and they did have some people in their, like, solo queue. They talked about Lux being picked up. Ooh, some range damage fighting. I was going to go okay. Zoe. Zoe's a champion you like to see into Victor being a mobile, getting Mouse hit with bubbles. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Actually, Lux is a pretty good one against Victor, too. Um, he, she just kind of outranges him generally. And even and one one Binding Lands, uh, without the Victor being in range to get the Q shield, and he'll pretty much just get melted. That is true. He did end up taking the cleanse on Victor, though. So we might be able to get out of some of those super deadly situations. Hopefully. I mean, he knows what he's doing with that. Probably taking yeah, it for no, the Jacks, taking it for the Lux. That's, it's, it's a good move, yeah. No, taking cleanse here is a good good choice, definitely. So looking at these teams lining up, basically, where's your money going? Where's it going towards? I I mean, okay. This is the this is like I got I, every time, every time I do a spectate and infernal game, I have to say, like, you can't bet against them, right? There's yeah. just no there's no rhyme, no logic to bet against Infernal. So Infernal's gonna win this game. And if Sentinels want to win it, they have to prove that they want to win it. And they want to come out. They got to come out and win it. And then, for the third game, maybe I'll think about changing my mind. But otherwise, until until someone proves it can happen, the Infernals, Infernals got this game in the bag. And I like the draft, too. The draft is really sick. It's it's quintessential Infernal. I mean, the, the, the reason why Infernal's doing so well in these drafts is, like, just five bands isn't enough there's too many characters that do the same thing as all their other characters <laughs> five bands just you won't be able to do it you need and to figure out a way to beat the, the draft strategy that they're going for with your draft rather than trying to bend out um 
their strategy because this is not going to work. And that's a great point. So with that in mind, do you think, let's take a look at the Sentinels team. We got the Toppy, the Jax, the Lux, Sona, Tarek. Do you think this has the damage required in order to take them down? Do you think it has the potential map-wide presence required that Sentinels is going to need in order to win in the locations that Infernal is going to push on? Yeah. I'm not so um, sure. It's tough because Urgot is... <sighs> Realistically, it just depends how well they play the Sun of Terror. It, it's, it's a hard thing to actually play, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I... It, it requires them to be very aware of what's going on. But the one thing that you have to say about it is that Sona is one of the better late game characters in the game. Um, arguably better than Kaisa. Arguable. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the real the real reason that this is so good is that um, Rovian and Alist uh, or sorry, Rovian and Bash like they like this passive playstyle where they don't um, go confrontational, they just like to farm. Uh, and that Sona Tarek is has a terrible early game. So their goal is to just get through the early game. Uh, and once they hit six, they become an absolute terror. So that's what they're going for. They're just trying to get, they're just like, they're like, okay, you guys are just going to AFK farm. Well, we're going to pick a really good lane that's later in the game and a really weak early game because you're not going to punish us for it. So we'll see. We'll have and to it, see how it goes. In one of those things, we got the one the one V9 Jax, right? Coming on out. You want to get him to the point in that late game. I know it is a jungle, but there still is potential. For Jax to come in and do a lot of work, especially with that Taric alt ultimate onto him when he can just yeah. jump in the back line and start slaying people. The the issue the great issue that I have here with Jax is it's uh it's a you know mid-range champion, right? You just have to get in that jump range, and Victor is also a mid-range champion. And I just I don't know if it's gonna win that, you know? I'm just yeah. not sure. I'm not sure if it will. Um so we'll have to see. We'll see I, if the Jax goes 5-0 and out of lane in the first 10 minutes or something. Gets ridiculously fed. Buys a Triforce. Oh, it just it starts. Work. Oh, yeah. It could work. <laughs> at that point in time, I would like to see how they stop it. Because uh, I would say it could more than work at that point. If they get to Triforce, 5 kills out of lane. Woo! I'm, I'm tingly just thinking about it. I love to see that sort of character jumping all over the place. Spinning that lamp post around and start blasting people down. Whack, whack, whack. And oh, we have some, good. exactly, doof, doof, doof. We have some people in the chat saying, uh, the epic rooster says, Infernals will lose. So he's literally calling it with the mouse mazing 1v9 also going in the chat. We got some sonalts we want. There were some fiestas going on the bot lane. People are predicting. I'm just predicting a good time for us all. That's for sure. So we got here is we got back to the skin game. We got Rovian and Mr. Neat not buying skins. Maybe they thought... The five versus four pack it up was not good enough. They just wanted to make it five versus three, put a little more difficulty on their back as Kaisa and Mr. Neat uh, and that Urgot not buying skins between games. Clearly, they don't know what it's like to be on my team. <laughs> <laughs> if you do well on my team, I will buy you a skin in between I mean, games. I'm, I'm definitely surprised that uh, Kaisa doesn't, or sorry, Rovian didn't, doesn't own a Kaisa skin. But hey, man, money is money. Rect League is. Not money. <laughs> we are not a professional league. We are greater than the professional league. But we are not no. uh, We're not paid like professionals. But that is okay. That is okay. All you have to do is get onto one of my teams for a season and you will pick up a heavy sum of skins for your favorite characters. But only if we win. So coming back into the game, this is game number two of the semifinals. Second series, Infernal versus Sentinel. Can Sentinels come back from that 1-0 deficit? To bring the games to one and one for that game point, or will Infernal turn up the heat again and burn down yet another team on their path to final victory? Let's see today. We are we are absolutely going to see today. Find out this time on Rect <laughs> on Rect League Z. <laughs> so we got a little bit of spread out action, no cheekiness coming in from this time, and no free vision going to either team. It was got 30 seconds until spawn. People just walking up and down the river. Sentinels are eliminated, or Sentinels, uh, Scuttle are eliminated from the tournament, so the world is no longer their river, and vice versa. Now it's everyone's yeah. river. Once it's again, no longer a team mascot. It's now just, just a, just a bug, just a mechanic. <laughs> He's just a bug sitting in the river. <laughs> So here we go, the minions have spawned as we have Hey Dude, 
looking to protect Mouse Mazing. Potentially going to get a uh, blind E off into this bush. First damage coming off to... Oh, nope. Does not pop it immediately. But they do spot that the Urgot is there. Shu sitting on his classic Victor skin. Death Sworn Victor. Uh, not too many players using that skin, but he's getting his first damage going off the shoe, hitting Mouse Mazing immediately with that uh, Chaos, uh, or the Death Ray, not the Chaos Storm, as the ultimate. does not Has not reached level 6 yet. When, um, alright, when Lux, uh, throws out that E and doesn't blow it up, the, uh, tooltip for it gets lost in the spaghetti code. <laughs> That's pretty fun. That's fantastic. Good work, Riot. Way to look excellent. So we got here on the bot side, Tucker looking to get some of that poke damage off his MK Heat, seeing if they can execute this Sonoteric bot lane. We'll have to see how Hey Dude fights up against Mr. Need. I expect a lot of shields being thrown at Urgot, while a lot of those corrosive charges being shot at that little Yordle on the top side. So from here, we got Mouse Mazing and Shu looking to do a little bit of trading back and forth. Uh, Mouse Mazing does miss a little bit of those E's. Uh, Shu looking to position himself nicely in order to do some excellent trades. And Tucker taking some damage on that Sona, having those low base stats. Roving doing some damage here, but we got Hot Soup 5 coming into the lane. Vosh goes in, has to get the flash out, but a little bit of miscoordination here. Rovian falling back. Hot Soup gets his Conquerors on there, gets the Ignite off onto Hot Soup 5, falling low right now as Zabel is showing up. Hot Soup has to jump in, but he gets the flash knock up. The first blood going over to Rovian. That's not what you want to see if you're a Sentinels fan. Yeah, but Infernal heating up early. Yeah, he very much so held his flash. Uh, Hot Soup expected him to flash, so he flashed to the other side of him. And then when Rubian didn't flash and just took the stun, he was like, what now? And then he had to walk out uh, because the collapse, which they saw coming from the uh, river plant, that was well played by Rubian. Balls of steel. <laughs> yeah, 100%. He had full confidence in Devosh going in there, but Mystery in the top side getting a solo kill onto Hey Dude. Hey Dude tries to push him into the tower, but he gets the flip on Mr. Neat. Looking great, but Sable is here with the knockup mouse. Amazing falling low, having to flash. Gets the kill! Sable already too much damage! 3-0 on the side of Infernal. Yikes! Within three minutes. Yeah, so this is like the tempo that you can sometimes see from them, especially with this... Uh, Rek'Sai pick. This is the kind of Rek'Sai uh, tempo that Sable likes to use. Um, you didn't see it last game because Kane has a really hard time doing this early game, but Rek'Sai is just such a good jungler at the moment. Such a good ganker. And as you see it there, coming in from many angles, pushing the tempo up. Oh, the music is still on apparently? Definitely off now. But I, was, I thought you guys might like a little bit of soft music in the background to break <laughs> it up, but that's fine. I'll turn it off. If our voices are hype enough for you, I'm feeling it as well. So let's hear in the chat. I want to see Sentinels coming back from a 1.5k gold disadvantage at 4 minutes. <laughs> it's hard to say that out loud without a little bit of a chuckle. So it's going to start looking kind of rough as the early laning phase looking pretty tasty for Rovian on the bot side. Also Urgot getting that solo kill on the top. This is going to be a rough one, but strap yourselves in because Sentinels are not out of it yet. Yeah, they're definitely not. They're in trouble, though. Hey Dude 5 is absolutely in trouble, though. Yeah, 100%. This is uh, be a really hard lane for him to deal with, I think. Poppy, like I said, Poppy into Urgot is definitely tough. He's going to have to make sure that uh, Steadfast Presence is up yeah. before Urgot flips him. And in the bot lane, um, they didn't. Tucker and Heat didn't get a full push into the turrets, so. They're losing. They, lost, they just lost one minion line, and they're starting to lose another one. And I uh, have to say this time around, Mouse Mazing and Shu keeping up in farm together. So at this point, Shu is not running away with it like he did in the previous game. But got to give credit, Mr. Neat is pushing them out of lane. Has figured out this champion very well. Did his homework, like you said in the previous game, looking like a star on Mr. Neat. Uh, we're going to have to double check to make sure Aduma did not sign in on Mr. Neat's account. Because he's looking kind of like he's looking kind of like a diamond platinum player right now. Yeah, he's, he's doing real well for himself. Yeah, you gotta give this man some credit. He has put a lot of time and effort into it, but Wait, just when you give him the caster curse, but Poppy's going in as Sable. Sable oh! <laughs> says Sable, you do not get to get an assist there. We are pulling that away from you. Like, although he might have gotten an assist yeah. from that, but sick. 
Sick yeah, work. You have to wonder where the mental is at right now. With Team Sentinels. This is looking more dire and more dire every every minute that passes in this game has been increasingly dire looking. Although this counter game could be really good if they wait for it. While oh, oh Mouse amazing though. Again, it's finding himself wow. in the chaos storm, just taking too much damage. Shu and Sable, the duo in the middle, doing too much as Hot Soup tried to turn it around, but no. They just yeah. don't have the vision for this. They just, yeah, they didn't, Mouse Amazing wasn't able to get any damage off before he was just CC'd, knocked up, and killed. It was just a little bit too much. As you saw, Shu likes those short engages, those bursts, because he can pull on that Chaos Storm, and it did so much damage in that fight. So as we see Sable trying to do the Infernal Dragon by himself, but is getting spotted out, uh, or at least Shu is doing the zoning for him. He's going to have to pull some pr people up here. Sable's falling extremely low. Now on this dragon, Vash is looking to do some tanking there before Sable gets soloed by the dragon. That could have been the closest thing Sentinels had to the teammate there, but Infernal picks up the Infernal. First dragon going the way of Infernal. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's all I gotta Infernal say to that. Infernal killing themselves right off the rip of this game, so... <laughs> exactly. Just like the previous game, uh, Suicide, or Sapuku or however you want to call it, going down. We have a little bit of uh, difficulty with the CSing here in the side of watching Tucker and MK Heat, but we got Sable sitting in the bush knowing nothing is there. This could spell a little bit more disaster. Sable going the long distance. Flash knockup. Oh, whoops. Uh, Vash the Stampede. Uh, Vash? Pushes him into the turret super hard. Oh, dies to the tower. <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Uh, on the side of Sable, just running it back, I running Sable it through. Should have fought this. I think. Oh, I guess Lux was there too. Okay, come on. Gets good. the shutdown gold. Does not wait the full ten seconds out of combat. Rovian getting some some plating out of this though. Heads up play from Rovian, turning a disaster into a little bit of a gold advantage for him. Yeah, Bash just didn't quite have his ult. He wasn't quite sick. So when he went to tank that out uh, tower on Alistar, he uh, basically just tied to it. He hundred percent spaghetti that one. He just full pasted that all over the place. Just, Hot, just, hey dude, getting a finally getting the the right. Uh, what is that called? The W? That yeah, steadfast presence. presence. The right steadfast presence to prevent the Urgot flip. Yeah, definitely needed on that one. You, you gotta when you're playing Poppy. It is a little hard to play somebody like Poppy if you do have any sort of latency, of course, or you don't have super high reflexes or don't anticipate when you're about to get flipped. But in this case, we have uh, a little again back and forth in the mid lane here. Shu's starting to pull away with the CS lead. Mr. Neat starting to pull away with the CS lead. Rovian uh, keeping about the same CS as Sona and Terra combined. So not looking too shabby. Uh, has about the same CS as Sona right now. Or same money, that is, same cash. Same wow, cash. Mouse Amazing just landed a really nice finding. Had his ultimate up, wasn't able to use it because the second he got bound, Shu threw the. Uh... The stun field, whatever that thing is called. Oh, goodness. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the gravity uh, field. Gravity field. Uh, to prevent, like, he would have interrupted the, the Lux ult, so. Shoot so. with the heads up plays, man. He yeah, is going really full Super play. Saiyan. Oh, the, ult, oh, the Prey Seeker. Oh, gets it. That, oh, but my hot soup is there for the counter gank, the one for one trade. That feels good on the side of, uh, on the side of Sentinels picking that up, knowing to be in the right space. Does get hit with the Prey Seeker, followed up um, from Sable's ultimate there, going the distance. At this point in time, he's super feeling himself right here. Yeah, they're just, like Quaz says in the chat, feeling like just getting too hype. Feeling that they're too far ahead already. Just want to make all of the yeah. plays all over the map. They they're, they tasted the, the victory in the first three minutes and just kind of like overextended three kills. Not overextended, but just into, I guess, straight yeah. up into it is a better phrase. Yeah, agreed. Kills. Just literally jumped into towers. Although, to be fair, Vash did miss his combo, which spaghetti that all over the place. But that is okay. It does happen from time to time. Sometimes uh, the combo for Alistair could be a little off-putting, especially if you weren't 100% ready for it. So maybe the communication wasn't there. Don't want to put it all on Vash. We don't know the comms. But other than that, we have a little bit more of the Sentinels roaming on the bot side. They're bringing four to the bottom right now. Mouse Amazing and Hot Soup are there. Binding thrown out, but Vash and Rovian respecting the roams. And getting out of there. As Shu says, fine, you just want to roam around? I'm going to take some plates. I'm going to get some money yeah, and put it directly plates, in my pocket. Plates, baby. Indeed, as you can see, does not end up taking them, though, as they did spot the roaming duo of Mouse Amazing and Hot Soup. 
walking through the river. So instead, what do we see from Infernal? All right, fine. You you bring so, four to the bottom. We're taking the Rift Herald. Yeah. Sable having a, a good time. Oh, but we see a little bit of a roam here. Going in, see if there's going to be a smite fight over here. Red team claims the Rift Herald. Oh Picks up a lot of damage out. The kills are there. Mr. Neat is there doing so much turret damage, though, and Shu is there. They pick up a two for one, but they also pick up the Rift Herald. Did anyone pick it up? Someone picked it up, right? Yes, Jax actually did pick it up. Okay, good. So Hot Soup does have that. Um, they gotta get, got it, got it. They gotta get into a lane and drop that before these plates go down, or this isn't gonna go end well for me. Botch going in on the bot side, though. We're seeing some battling. MK Heat falling to half health, but then they have to back up. So, Tucker's damage is there. So this is what I was kind of referring to earlier about um, the Sonoteric, because I don't, I'm not convinced people really know why to pick this. So uh, you don't want to take any farm on Sona until after you complete the tribute, and he's, I mean, well, it's 12 minutes and he's at 400 out of 500, so he's close, but the Taric should pretty much be taking everything so that you can get that tribute as fast as possible. Right. So then you can farm and get gold from the tribute at the same time. Right. Makes perfect sense. But at this point here, we have the first objective-focused play coming in from Sentinels, looking to see if they can grab this Infernal Drake, but a team fight is erupting right now. Vasha Stampede is in the back lane, but the blue team steals it. Mouse Mazing drops the ultimate all over the enemy team, but they have Sable there. Fighting Mr. Neat is there as well, but they're going to have to back up. It is currently a two for nothing. Hatsu oh, falling low. Goodness. Just keep walking forward. They keep it pushing. Three for zero right now. Tucker is there with Hey Dude looking to get some damage onto Shu. Shu gets the kill onto Tucker, though, and also yeah, gets away from the Blast Plant. That seemed like a split call because if they had really meant that call to go after Shu like that, Mouse Mazing needed to follow, and I don't think he wanted that call. I think he saw his sights on this mid lane tower on these plates with the Swift Herald. And exactly, because here come the plates. Extension from I believe it was Tucker and Hayden. But you know, I mean, I don't want to take it away from him. That was a really sick team fight. So uh, they did a lot of really good there, um, bringing the gold back to even in this game. And they also took away three plates right now, just from nothing, from zero. Zero damage to the tower to three plates. Immediately, third damage coming out. Shoot does not fall down, but unfortunately, Mouse Mason is going to have to sacrifice himself. Unfortunately, is there with it, but it gets immediately exploded by the Urgot. Shotgun knees. Hey, dude, five looking to get out of there. MK Heat hits him with the stun, but hi, hey, dude, five is able to get out of that, but they're going to be a return kill on this. Poppy, you could walk in a little bit too close, my friend. You're going to have to get out of there before the damage comes your way. And we see Infernal trading it away. Sentinel staying slightly too long. A lot of question marks coming out from the chat right now. <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of what just happened going back and forth. Going back and forth, people did not die. Oh, I didn't see what happened to the Urgadi. Hold on, I'm jumping back. Yeah, yeah, I have to say exactly what's going on. Are they are they referring to the flip? Wait, what? I'm not. Urgot's E is the flip. The W is the uh, turret. The Q is the uh, uh, the charge. What ex what exactly happened? I'm I'm not sure what happened. I'm, go I'm going back. You um you, you stay present. I'm going back. I'm going yeah back. yeah yeah. And speaking of which, I will oh, talk about the present because we got the mouse okay, amazing actually. bindings. Yeah, he buffered it with the poppy R, so he started getting like way knocked back to base, but he like used it as he got hit so he like moved back to the location i don't know if that should oh, work like that, that yeah hurt, so it, so it like canceled out the movement from poppy's ult it's kind of yeah. like uh when ezreal gets hooked and he fucking ease right. that sort of thing yeah 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 <laughs> that uh, seems a little spaghetti to me i mean Maybe a couple meatballs there yeah yeah <laughs> This is definitely not a vegan stream for those of you who don't like spaghetti and meatballs sorry about that as you saw right there but, uh, I mean, I guess if it's intended, then not spaghetti, but... Maybe so. If that's the case, then Mr. Neat is a mechanical god, and we have to give him a lot of credit for that. True, 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 true. So, hey, dude, looking to knock off Mr. Neat in the top side. It looks like they still think they're in the laning phase. <laughs> Everyone up there in the top side right now, as we got roaming all over the map. MK Heat Tucker looking to do some normal stuff. The game's slowing down slightly here, as we, uh, we see some of the mid turrets taking a lot of damage. But other than that, not too much going on right here. Hey Dude 5 looking at gaming a little bit more, but that Urgot's up 30 farm. It's just Infernal all over the map are just up everywhere in that farm. Rovian and Shu just holding it so tightly. 
Yeah, even if you combine the Saratona farm, it's not it's not really even close to Rovian's numbers right now. Absolutely, it just flows like a harpoon daily and nightly. I mean, will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. I <laughs> have not been thrilled with my amazing performance. <laughs> I think I think at least the last time I saw him play, he looked significantly stronger. Maybe that's just a credit to Shu. Maybe she was just absolutely like manhandling this lane. Maybe he's doing things that other mid laners just don't do, which totally could be the case. Well, that's the thing. Mouse Mazing in the previous series was playing in the jungle. His pathing was crisp and clean, and his his damage was great. He was just farming all over the place. He got to play champions that he I think he liked. You know, and it was it wasn't the oppressive nature of Infernal. They didn't have to worry about having the the game being just accelerated so heavily. And just all of the lanes are just such an uphill battle right now. Yeah, Hatsu Five unfortunately just wasted about thirty seconds on a ward. Hate to see that. Yeah. But that's the thing, wards are like map hacks. Buy them. Yeah, I Yeah. Or place them correctly is really what it is now. <laughs> yeah. For sure, don't place them always in the most obvious locations. Make them, make them hard to spot. But here we go, we got some just action on the top. Mr. Neat looking to take these turrets. We have Rovian and Vosh looking to check what's going on as the dragon is about to spawn. Looking to actually take their first dragon of the game, potentially. Trying it out here, five man gank, but they got the Zona ult over the wall. Picking it up, lasers going down. Rovian falls, Vosh getting knocked up right now, has his ultimate taking down. Don't think he's gonna see any backup here. Boom! Sentinel's light. picking up Deuce! Deuce in the river! But not for nothing. Infernal taking the top turret as a result. Sable looking to see if he can steal. I don't think Sable should even like go. Oh gosh. Sable, you're a madman. Red team takes the dragon, picks up the kill as well. Totally okay, unnecessary. All I'm say is you gotta know when to cut your losses. Okay? You gotta know when to cut the loss. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I don't know if that was worth it. Although, getting key, if he did get that Infernal, getting that single Infernal off of them would have been huge. and That would have been game-breaking. You're right. Yeah. It, they, he was just going for the victory. Hello, Shu. Okay. Uh, so we got Shu finding himself in the wrong spot, looking to see if he can... Oh, we got some flashes. Flash against the wall. Knock up. Shut down. Going on to the Jax. Exactly yeah. the person you want to see that on. That is who you need, yeah, it is who you need to put it on, but he also went for the uh, the Bloodraiser enchantment instead of like... Um, well, I mean, I guess I personally would like to see Cinderhope first and then go into Triforce, or even just skip the jungle item and go straight Triforce. Um, I'm not sure that attack speed really does too much. Yeah, it helps out with like the passive stuff, but like, what do you... Who are you going to be punching for that long? Is the main right. thing. Right. Right. I mean, the point, the the best part about Jax is the like burst of like, you land with the Sheen W and just punch someone for seven hundred. Exactly. That's like kind of the purpose. Even more than that, because you got the relentless assault proc too, right? Like he has his ultimate passive, so like you you hit two right. things, you jump Q yes. W and, and you hit him for like a thousand. Right. And, and and the and to his credit, right, that does stack faster with the blood razor, the the ultimate passive. Yeah. This year, so we'll have to see if that does come into play. He is four and two, is able to do plenty of damage. Did finally finish that Triforce, so we might see some new life in the Sentinels. It is eleven to eleven, only down by four K gold. And I mean, if we see some more spaghetti action coming from the next couple minutes, Sentinels could be coming right back into this game. Yeah, it's a eleven eleven, but they're down three turrets uh, and a lot, a whole lot, a lot of fun. The thing that I think, uh, you're right with the farm, the one thing I'd like to point out that I think is the biggest obstacle is Mr. Neat on this Urgot. Who do you send to take care of this? And we also got Shu in the top lane. Hanging out. Hey dude 5, hot 2 5, the 5 bro is about to get a high 5. Oh Shu! Oh, gets knocked against the wall, knocked up again on a rampage. The Jack's picking up another kill. Well done on the side of Sentinels, man. Kind of what they need to do right now. They need to look for these death bushes, but they're gonna lose some damage, some health on this top bot lane tower. If not, ooh. oh, Sable, not quite, not quite. Oh, Bosh, look at all this damage. That, that turret cool. is very ramped up. Yeah. That all warmed up tower. Ooh. Uh, if Mr. D would have caught that. That would have been that would have been some damage coming out. Oh, jeez, no spacing run. Oh, good flash, good flash. 
does not end up dying. However, yeah, exactly. There, what ends up happening is Mouse Mazing might be sacrificing his yeah. life in order to and grab this sneaky this, Baron. This, so this is why you buy the Blood Razor. This Blood Razor doing 4% max hit every every auto is going to do quite a bit. This could be the ticket back into the game. I mean, this is, this is huge that they picked this up. What a good play from them. Absolutely. And if nothing else, even if they are not able to make a push out of this, they take it away from Infernal. So they will not be able to close this game out right. in less than and 25 so minutes. Now this Sona is starting already, almost has that W max, so once, like, the healing that is going to come out from the squad is going to be really aggressive, especially once this Terra gets a few more points in his Q. It's going to be some some healing that's going to be really hard to deal with, although the Terra doesn't have any mana items, so he's got to be really careful about how he spends his mana. True. Uh, he can only cast his Q ten times, which is not ideal well, with oh, no other spells, and that's not exactly ideal. They have a good push here. She's in the top lane, that's yeah, the base, so they're going to be able to get this tower probably. This is definitely what I like to see, right? Sentinels are saying, let's play our game, where it's bring them to us. We're not going to move around the map for you. We have the Baron buff. We're going to dictate where it goes. Since it looks like Infernal was trying to just move them around the map again, like, oh, we'll go top, we'll go bottom. But instead, Sentinels are marching as one with their team fighting comp, looking to make this happen. But it looks like Infernal has finally matched it. They have four in the mid. They have plenty of wave clear. So then yeah, that, all right. What, I, what you don't want to do is like kind of do this waiting around. You don't really want to do this. The shoot, the the Vladimir, ooh, ooh, the Victor poke is, it's a lot, man. It's going to be hard to deal with. But they do have the Sona and the Terek, so they should be able to heal this up pretty nicely. It's true. So we will see what they're able to accomplish, because right now, like you said, this waiting around, not a great thing. It is allowing Inferno. Oh, they have the Flash! Oh. Sona, three men! Three women all onto it! Oh, they got Shu the and Rovian! Double kill going in right here! This could be the big ending to the game! They got three going in right now! They still have the Baron buff, only two left are Urgot and Insable on that Rex side. That is not enough! Oh, that is, is super solo. huge. And, and to his credit, Shu immediately, it was an instant cleanse from Shu, but it got layered by the Jackstone and the, the Lux snare, and he just, it, so he got rid of the Sona ult, but he still was there in place, uh, and got uh, both of them lay, leveled by the Lux laser. Oh, that was so that sick. This is going to be the first time. We very possible. See them. They, they need to not overextend and take too much damage yeah, from these towers well, here. They got to go yet, very quickly. Because right, here comes Rovian. Oh, the, late, the damage coming out hits three. Vash is falling very low. Mr. Nini is very low. Oh, no. Hot Soup's oh, no, jumping in. Hot Soup's jumping in. This is going to be tough because we got the Sable here. Now everyone is back up there trying to retreat. MK, he is in the back line. Oh, we have Rovian jumps in for the damage. Knocked up against the wall, however. Going to sacrifice his life. Hey, dude, five looking to get out of there. But that was just so close. The death timers are not long enough. They were only level 12 and 14, so they were back up in less Holy than 40 moly. seconds. Yeah, the death timers just weren't long enough. It was only 23 minutes into the game. Oh, no. Oh, man. That's crazy, though. What a, what a turn. I mean, wow. What a game, dude. This is crazy. That was so sick. You gotta give Sentinels all the credit for that team fight. That was beautifully orchestrated. Perfect, perfectly layered from Tucker with the Flash ultimate. Not going to have that for another four minutes, but unfortunately that was... Or fortunately for Sentinels, that was an excellent start. Grabs yeah. the mid inhibitor as well, which is right. clutch. It would have been it would have been ideal after the inhib to back out and like reset the lanes, but the issue is they couldn't go to another lane to pick up a tower because all their lanes were like... All the lanes are like pushed into their second tier, so they just wouldn't have been able to get the minions there in time. Right. In this case, they had to go for it. That was It was very possible. They were not able to, unfortunately, take down any of the even uh, Nexus turrets. If they were able to grab at least one, they could have the next team fight could have spelled the end of the game. But we'll see. That means just yeah. more awesome yeah. Best League of Legends gameplay ahead of us. All right, Nexus turrets don't regen health. Is that true? It doesn't look like it. So that one, that one seems to be sitting at, unless it's a spectator bug, which it probably isn't. That would be a bad so. spectator bug to have. Yeah, that'd be a rough one. Yeah, it looks like they don't regen health. So here right, we go. So we got uh, Sentinels all grouping up as five in the bot lane while they, they're they going to have to deal with Mr. Neat and the top for free. They're doing their best to zone it out, not taking the turrets quite fast enough. Mr. Neat still in the top side. Yeah. Um, um, someone should go back. Hello? <laughs> Team? There goes Poppy. All right, Poppy is going back. All right. 
just want to double check because if they just give up the inhibitor for free, all of their hard work was for nothing. Yep. It's a good Lich Bane buy, uh, pick up from Sona. It's going to help take down some of these towers because they don't have any AD carries, so that's kind of actually hard to do. Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Sunita is just ignoring the poppy right here. Oh, gets the flip over right now. There's a lot of damage going in, taking some damage from the turret, but not enough to die. Hey, dude, five is l thankfully at least tanky enough to take a lot of this punishment. They're not really getting anything accomplished in the bot lane. Yeah, this is pretty much nothing. There's too much wave clear, and since they uh, no longer have Baron, there's you know the wave clear from Shu is just too, you know they just destroy it. They're looking to get this flash back up, which I think is up in like 75 seconds for Sona. Mr. Neat. I think that was really their their win. Is just like making that move again. And Mr. Neat is literally just ignoring Poppy and crushing yeah. it in the top side. This is not an okay situation to be in. All right, so we're we're seeing a little bit of movement here on the bot side. I think Sentinels, Sentinels are looking for another team fight. They need a base. I mean, realistically, they just have to base. They, they're just gonna lose their inhibit if they don't leave. She was doing a lot of poke here. Yeah, they're just they're they're accomplishing nothing and. Hey, yeah, dude, five. The uh, there is the turret. There's oh, gonna be the mid lane though. The mid lane though. Pushing in, pushing in, taking a turret they for got, free. They got one tower, and they brought the other tower down to like nothing. But they're gonna lose this inhib. I still can't see how this could be worth it. Right now, they're gonna lose the top inhibitor, but we got the the oh. engage going on the top side. Hey, hot two five just goes down. They are fighting under the turret. He's taking the tower. Oh, but they got the Taric ultimate right now. But unfortunately, they're still under the turret. Tucker is taking some damage. The double kill going out for Zabel. They are pushing them back. MK yeah, Heat and Mouse basically the only ones left. They still on the top it. side. We got <laughs> we got a lot of fighting going back and forth. Sable picks up the triple kill like a beast, and Hey Dude Five is still trying to. Oh, has to barely dodge. MK Heat is getting murdered by something. That turret messed the man up. Look, that if you want to trade your top inhib for one of the mid-tier towers, sure, that's fine. You don't go for this play in the bot lane. You don't go for this 4v... 4v3. Oh, man. And Okay, maybe you do, but you have to communicate it better. You have to get that Jax ultimate... You gotta get the Taric ultimate onto the Jax. You gotta WR onto the Jax if you're the Taric. And get him invulnerable when he goes in for that. Or he's just gonna die like we just saw. Yeah. So, oh, and now the Baron. He's already at half. If if they pick this up, this might be this might be it. Oh, blue team takes the Baron. This is gonna be oh. kind of gross. Hot two five is going in all by himself. Cannot. Hey, dude five goes in one v five, and gets five v one. Oh man. And now suddenly it seems almost hopeless they had such a good shot but now infernal the best the most proficient team that the rec league has ever seen has the infernal has an inhibitor or sorry has the baron has an inhibitor down has two infernal double infernal and air cloud drake so sick it's gonna be really this is gonna be a hard road they gotta have a really sick play coming up from tucker i mean tucker was their hero last uh last series Last series, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, uh, he was... Crab, he pretty much did it all, so can he do it? He almost did it this game, too. Thus far, right, with the triple Sona ultimate that almost spelled the end of the game. They were so close. Infernal pushed to the brink for the first time all season. Looking so close to death, but here we go. We got the five-man squad. Four in the middle, one on the sides. Who can answer this Urgot, but who can answer the four-man in the middle? find out this time in just a couple minutes. Mr. Neat here under the tower just oh. blasting it with the turret status, but we got the big fight coming on the mid lane. Shu gets the kill in a hot soup. Unfortunately, before the, the, the ult that goes down, the uh, Sable in the back line trying to do what he can. Mr. Neat coming up to the fight. Sable is trying to do, here it is. Oh, it falls so low. Mouse Mazing retreating for his life. Just out of range, the lasers coming out, trying to do what they can for the minions. Unfortunately, just too much. The Baron empowered minions are there. Tucker falls to the damage of Shu. Mr. Neat backing him up, pulls him in with the fear beyond death, beating down That's these turrets. Good night and goodbye, Infernal burning down the house for sure. Woo. We don't get no water. Let this mother effer burn as Infernal takes it 2 0 versus the Sentinels in the semifinals. Basically, tell me tell me what your feelings are after this game. Damn, man, I just I you need to have that if you don't if you're not having the coordination to get that Terek ult onto your dive before you dive, you should not be picking that Terek. That you gotta get that. But 
honestly though seriously infernal played so well and it almost like i don't know if that totally answers the question of if they lose are they gonna be able to keep their mentality straight but it damn well comes close because they were really really close to losing that game um maybe not as close as it would have seemed considering how short the death timers were but it was close it was closer than i think we've ever seen them get on stream anyway yeah uh i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's accurate i would say it's accurate they've been pretty pretty dominant for the majority of their games as you can see like look at their kdas right they're all above seven and robians was 13 no one really took them to the brink in a lot of these games but you got to give credit to sentinels they put up a big fight and look it's yeah, so good absolutely so especially, with that especially, after what, especially what happened after at the beginning of that game yeah like they went down and man their comms must have been dead silent and then they just, you know, Infernal overextended a little bit. They found a couple kills. And then they had that one really sick team fight and got a couple extra. I They battled their way back. So, like, really props to them. That was, like, a very well done game. Agreed. Uh, against the best team that the Rec League has ever seen. Now, now what, 18-0, eight, eight, right? Yeah, 18-0. and 0, So So sick. So from that, what we're going to come down to here is who do you want to talk to? Whose word do you want to get before we go into oh, the finals? Um, well, I think it's only, I, we, we, we spotted the opposite team's mid, the Merkel's mid -lit, so we should probably pull Shu if he's around, and, um, let me see, I wanna, I wanna, no, it's gotta be Mr. Neat, it's gotta be Mr. Neat, he played so well, um, and that Urgot pick was very, very good for him. Indeed. So if you wanna grab them in, sure. let them know. And I'll take a moment while we're talking about that to say thank you once again for everyone tuning in for the Rec League tonight. These have been the semifinals. We got next week. This is the ultimate grand finals of the tournament. No spoilerinos, but you will see Infernal once again playing in the finals. Uh, do you want me to announce who, who else won or no? We can just say that. Uh, say that again? Sorry. I told do, you want, do you want me to say, uh, do you want me to spoil the previous series? I guess I could. We yeah, can talk about who's going in. There. Coming into the finals is going to be Team Merc Wolves versus Team Infernal, and with that, we got to we got to talk to the two themselves. That two of many that played so well, Shu and Mister Neat. Welcome to your victory broadcast. How are you feeling tonight? Pretty good. Thanks for asking. Absolutely, Mister Neat. How you doing? How you feeling? I'm doing good. I it's been a game that. A series that I actually wanted to happen for a long time. Why is well, that? Because, like, I play a lot of tanky champions and haven't had a chance to really go off. And it was just nice to actually go off and show that, you know, I'm not just somebody who's the weakest link on the team. And that's why I really wanted to try to showcase this evening. That's for sure. You are definitely second most damage dealt on the team at 15.5k, but you still have a big mountain to climb if you want to catch up to Shu's 36.5k on that victor. Shu, another statement game for you. What did you think about that game? Uh, Victor's a fun champion. We had, we had a little bit of a flub in the mid game, and we just kind of we, we tilted a little bit, which is honestly, that's not something that usually happens, but for whatever reason, that, that, that game, it was a little more awkward. Um, I think it was just because we've only practiced against Sonoteric a few times. Mm. Um, so we, we tilted a little bit and we kind of floundered. But when, once we like once we caught ourselves again, we were fine. But like, so. Yeah, your, your backup net is strong because it definitely caught you all as you came together and pushed the back from the brink of defeat in that one. So with that in mind... What sort of lessons have do you feel you've learned from this game coming into the finals, coming so close to defeat but bringing it back, or even even not just the game but like this whole season in general, this like spectacular run that you guys have had? Um, uh, we're going we're going for the twenty one and zero. It's a good move. That's the goal. <laughs> it's 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 a good play. It's a good move. Yeah. Every indeed. every game has something valuable that we can take from it. We got complacent in the middle of that game and they they got a bunch of kills and then we tilted a little bit so it's it's us telling it's telling ourselves that our mental is not what it needs to be and we can work on that there you go um well i got i got one last question okay um so uh we we put a floor out for um shadow vault earlier in the interviews so i guess to both of you guys uh you're playing miracles next week what are you looking forward to in that matchup winning <laughs> <laughs> all right fair enough <laughs> yep Mr. Nate? Oh, I'm, I'm just looking forward uh, to playing. Um, it's 
it's going to be fun. It's the finals. I didn't, I didn't get to the finals uh, season two, so it'd be nice to get there uh, this this season and uh, you know win that win that mug. I, I have confidence in my team. We trust <laughs> each other, and like she was saying earlier, you know, like even if we tilt, we're we're able to figure out what we did wrong and get correct ourselves. And it's nice to have that kind of team where you don't just spiral completely out of control. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. Really valid. So then, so with that, I'm I'm super interested specifically, Mr. Neat. If you end up playing against the current top lane for Merkwarf's Toxic Vez, unless they switch around, what words do you have to say to that man? You better ban my champions. Oh shoot! What do you got to say to the Shadow of Old? Just let the game decide it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> very very political. Fair enough. <laughs> I've already made my statement. I'm done. <laughs> All right, cool guys. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for hopping in. Um, good luck Appreciate to you it. in the finals next week. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a great one. Yeah. You as well. So then, with that, Icicly, it's been a pleasure broadcasting with you today. Thank you all for tuning in to the semifinals. Icicly, what else do you have to say to the people before we sign out? Um, GG's guys, uh, follow us. Anyone new here? If anyone new here is follow us on uh, all the things. Shameless plug. Uh, what Instagram, Twitter? I don't know. Are we using the Twitter still? I don't actually know. I'm pretty sure I used to run that, and I haven't read it. So uh, <laughs> yeah. And then Game of Thrones. Um, wish all the Starks the best of luck because they're gonna need it. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a rough one tonight on the Game of Thrones. Thank you all for watching it for sure. Be sure to tune in on Thursday evening at 8 p.m. for the State of the League, talking about the finals. Probably talking about what we expect to see, what we hope to see, and what we don't want to see coming into the finals this coming up this time around but once again from myself and icingly thank you once again for joining up for the best league of legends on the planet you all have an excellent night go find some delicious food and and sit tight because that got is going to be a rough one thank you and goodbye say goodbye icingly bye everyone good night <laughs>